Welcome to another installment of 5 Minute Tones. Today I want to show you a very cool thing you can do with the Pitch Follower modifier in the Axe FX3. What I've got at the moment is the USA 2C++ dialed up. It sounds like this. <laughs> So even though that's quite a lot of gain, it's quite articulate. The thing that I'm missing though, is that up high I don't have quite as much sustain as I'd like. One fix for that is I could just turn the overdrive control up and get more sustain. That's what I like, but when I go back and play rhythm guitar... I've kind of lost that articulation in there. So one way around this is that I could map the input gain to the pitch of my guitar as follows. Let's right click the overdrive control and set the modifier source to be the pitch follower. What this is going to do is read the pitch of my guitar. I'm in drop C, so the lowest note will be a low C and then say to the overdrive control, hey, go to here. So let's set the minimum value to be about say just over five, and I'll set the maximum value to 10. What's gonna happen now is that when I play down low, I'm gonna have less gain on that overdrive control, and as I turn it up, I'm gonna have more of what I want, which is that overdrive thing. So low, high, And then I've got all that glorious sustain on the high strings. I don't have to kick in a drive pedal. I don't have to do anything. This is all automatic, which is pretty cool. One thing that I do find when using this modifier is I would turn the attack and the release control up to about 100 milliseconds. This is essentially going to stop that really abrupt fade in and fade out as I transition from high notes to low notes. This is kind of like, uh, I always think of modifiers as like a little helper who's going to turn knobs uh, depending on what you tell them to do. And in this case, if you turn the attack and release up, it means their reaction time isn't quite as fast. So sort of turn it up a bit slower and turn it down a bit slower like this. <laughs> Maybe I'd turn the release up a little bit more just to kind of smooth all of that out. But that's a pretty amazing feature that we've got right under our fingertips. And, you know, there's no reason why we couldn't say, hey, don't just turn the overdrive up. As the overdrive goes up, turn the treble down so it smooths it all out. Or, you know, bring the bass control up as well. You could totally use all of these controls as a, like, dynamic, pitch-mapped, controllable amp, which, uh, you know, there's no real amp which does that kind of thing, but you can make it all happen if you fine-tune these parameters in the Axe FX3, which is pretty awesome. Another thing would be like, okay, what if I want a delay in there? I've got this multi-delay block in there, uh, and let's say I'll have the mix control. I want that to be really low when I'm playing down low, so let's also map that to the pitch follower, but this time I'll set the minimum to be zero, and then I'll set the maximum to be about 30%, so that when I'm playing down here, there's still just a little bit of delay in there, but if I turn it up, that's pretty cool, and then it turns it down uh, almost like an automatic ducker or like a reverse gated delay. Something like that, I don't know. But uh, essentially, I, I would think of this as it's like, it's, <laughs> it's almost automating patch changes. You know, it's turning gain up as you play higher and it's turning delay up as you play higher and then it's doing the opposite effect as you turn it down. So I would highly recommend experimenting with the pitch follower modifier in the Axe FX3 as I would with all the other modifiers. We'll do little five minute tones videos where we'll have a look at say like the envelope follower and the sequencer uh, just to do cool stuff because it's there. We may as well use it and we can use it uh, to really tap into some creative sounds. If you enjoyed this, uh, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.